trader. I'm interested in, I don't know if you were hearing a little bit about the conversation that I, I was having with Alexis uh, before, or rather Alexis Goldstein before, but you know, she kind of raised this question on, okay, yeah, we have this, this one moment. And the week was, the news was like very thrilling to a lot of people to see, arguably there may be some things that are happening under, you know, kind of behind the curtain. And so it's not just, um, you know, Wall Street bets that is driving the stock price, but perhaps other, um, other actors involved too. But, you know, the thing that she brings up is, does this really change how the game is rigged and how our economy is rigged? And if not, like, what are some of those, I don't know, what are some of those, like, are there any glimmers or windows that you see for an everyday retail investor, someone who's just kind of you know, buying stocks or just anyone else that's at home watching all of this unfold? For me personally, I think it, it's a twofold issue. Um, one, you have the old idea that is you, you won't get in trouble if you rob from the poor, only if you do from the rich, mm. okay? And so that's kind of what we saw during the 2008 crisis, right? If you look into the politics of it. Um, you know, the only person who went to prison, I won't say his name, but he got caught and went to prison. He stole from rich people. But the banks and all of those corporations who robbed the American people, they got bailed out. Sure, somebody got fired with a $50 million golden parachute package. All right. Now, not only did the small people get, you know, get, get hurt on it, but two things came out of it. Well, one of them was also from equities trading. And that was, hey, if you have a small bank account, if you have under $25,000, we're not going to let you day trade because we at the government know that we've got to protect you. Kind of what we heard from some of the, the, the brokerages today. We're going we're gonna to stop your ability to trade to mitigate the risk because we want to protect you. I mean, you know, and so, hey, listen, we're going to stop letting you do that because we know what's best for you. Excuse me, government, you're telling me my $4,000 I can't day trade, but I, I can still go to the casino and put it all on red, right? Yeah, that's cool. But, but wait, but I can't do 4000 Well, what about the guy who has $5 million? Oh, wait, what about the guy who has $5 million of someone else's money who's betting that on... The, that's cool, though, right? Or shorting so, a stock for 130%. <laughs> exactly. And then, at the end of the day, not only does that happen, but... It call it comes back to you know, you know other politicians and whatnot, and and, and I don't mean that like of course you no, you know you're, you're newer to the Congress, but what you have to look at it and say to yourself, okay, these politicians who are the biggest donors? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hedge funds, banks, billionaires. Mm -hmm. Who stands to gain the most or lose the most from this? Who writes the laws? So now as a retail trader, I have to look and say, do I really think that my congressman and my senator who are funded by these people are going to write laws to protect me and hurt them? Yep. No, they're going to wait for the next news cycle story to happen, and then all of it's going to disappear. I mean, listen, like, you're totally right. <laughs> you're totally right. So one of the things that, um, that Alexis was talking about uh, was that, you know, what was happening here with Robin Hood and with, with these trades were that everyday people were starting to be able to identify and exploit vulnerabilities in the system that has traditionally been cordoned off. Um, and this is one huge example of that happening. But we've been seeing this happen across the board in so many other areas. And politics is one of them. So, you know, for example, um, not just me, but in 2018, there was this slew of freshmen. Um, it was the largest, one of the largest freshman classes since Watergate. And one of the things that a lot of those, a lot of these like new, new members of Congress have in common is that they're some of the only ones that ran on promises to not take any corporate lobbyist money. And whether they were left, whether they were more conservative, that was one of the through lines. Like, you know, I don't take any lobbyist money. There are some people more conservative that don't take any lobbyist money. Um, but that was like the one thing, regardless of your politics, that, that was starting to, you know, be shared in common. And the reason we were able to do that was because of technology, because there are these new platforms the same way like Robinhood allows you to buy a singular stock or the way that you're able to kind of like get in the game with five, ten bucks in certain you know, circumstances. Now it was a similar exploitation of our political system. So before, if you wanted to have any influence in our political system, you needed to cut a $2,500 check. 
Who's going to do that? Who is, who, what kind of person has the money to just give $2,500 minimum, um, if not more, to a politician? I mean, that is just the wealthiest people in society that have the ability to not just give that, but also organize and bundle it into millions of dollars. And so, um, we're kind of seeing these like similar exploitations and then now as technology advances it starts to actually small democratize some of these systems and people are starting to figure out all these little ways in which the game is rigged and when you talk about this yeah i sit on i sit on the financial services committee i got that assignment when i first got to congress this is the committee that has jurisdiction over wall street I have had, this is the committee that Mark Zuckerberg came in because, and the reason he came in under financial services was because he was trying to roll out, Facebook was trying to roll out Libra at the time, their own kind of mm -hmm. crypto-esque currency. Mm -hmm.